Hi and welcome to another video. So one subscriber asked me if I could do a bit more on ray margin after I did my last ray margin video where I covered a bizarre 4D world which is utterly complicated and not like this nice thing here. So I have set up the same ray margin framework and I implemented a fractal, well, a relatively simple one, known as the Menga Sponge. And we are going to explore this today, look a bit into the details in how this fancy lightning is made, and we'll look at another version where instead of light coming out from the outside, we have darkness and ex explore it from the inside. But first, let's go through this. So this is actually full HD real time um, it runs a bit slow my graphic card is old but um, for future demos they might get laggy since I currently not will to buy a 500 or 800 euro graphics card I just don't want to so let's go in one of these little holes here then. just look at the amazing amount of detail that ray marching spits out just lovely isn't it Let's get out the tool. And we are, here we have the nice fractal city. So the source code for setting up the OpenGL framework, I mean all of what you see runs in a single text file, which is a fragment shader. And it's quite easy to program this little shader if you know a bit of C and if you know a bit of graphics. But the whole framework around it, like the mouse input, the keyboard input, uh, the player positions and basically setting a window or full screen and all this stuff runs in a framework I made five years ago. And it's already for the 4D version in the channel's GitHub. Or is it the Dropbox? I don't really remember. But you find it in the other video. And for this video, I'm going to put up the framework since it's modified. It's no longer 4D, it's just 3D. So let's go on a little travel to the outsides of this fractal city. You see, it is just a gigantic cube. I'm also very proud of the fog I implemented. It looks very nice, very attractive. Just a gigantic fractal cube. Isn't it beautiful? So with space we can actually speed up our journey through this thing. And one thing I'm really proud of is this fake lighting. It looks like the light is reflected on the inside of these holes and then it's just reflecting and bouncing through this whole structure. It looks really neat and it's all faked. But with ray marching you can do so many so nice effects so I think that's that's enough for this one. I mean, you can do this for hours, just going through this and exploring every little piece of this fractal and it just does not get boring. I really like it. This will only be the first one of maybe a series if you do like these videos. I mean, it's a bit in the contrast to my last videos where it's mostly about all sorts of things, but chemistry at the moment is a bit problematic since um, I don't really have the space for it for larger, pro uh, for larger projects. So PC projects are more welcome to me. So let's quit this. So you see we don't have any errors in the shader compilation, which is very fortunate. Um, this is actually a nice feature because you'll soon see that you are going to edit the shader in the notepad. So this is the shader file. It's not a very big file and this everything you saw in the last minutes just comes out of this tiny file. So the void main is something you don't want to touch. It's going to calculate the pixel positions, takes in the player positions, creates the ray directions and then gets the color of the pixel from the void render and sets it to the screen. 
so you probably never need to change anything in the white main, so we can just close it down. It's not interesting. That's the most important function, the vector free. It creates a color vector, render, and that's what we are going to look at now. So we have a light source, and it's a point light at the player position. So how this works out in detail is probably too long for this short video. So this is our source of lightning. Then we have a bounding plane of how far our rays can actually travel before we cut them off. And that's actually the point where the fog makes everything visible. So you can just combine this so that no one really sees what's going on. Um, then you create the ray data by intersecting. We have here some sky color and some solid color which is just coloring the scene and if the rays don't hit anything we call it sky color else we are going to calculate normals of our surface to create some simple diffuse lighting that's the most basic lighting we have everywhere so let's take a look at this what diffuse lighting is you might get an idea of it so let's just look at the pictures. They're usually in all. So here you actually have a very nice picture about what's going on. So diffuse lightning is really just dark and bright where there's no light. So it is in the direction of light or in the direction, not in the direction of light. Remember you don't have shadows here. Specular is that little glance as if it were a bit reflective and combined you get uh, something that's called phone lighting I guess I'm not really sure about that but we do both diffuse and specular lighting in a very neat way combine it so the light you saw shining through the fractal actually is an inverted specular lighting inverted means that it does not create a bright spot but a dark spot and bright everywhere else but why does it look like light well before because we do invert everything at the end too so the whole image you saw was actually inverted colors so let's set the color inversion to zero unfortunately you have to change these things here to colossus and I'm definitely going to change this at some point in the future with a, a compiler definition. But now just ignore it. Now we have real specular lighting, like here. Non-inverted colors. Real diffuse lightning. We combine this. Then we have a kind of ambient occlusion, which is just fake by distance data. We get from our ray intersection. You see, I'm not only returning... Um, the position but also the iteration count so how much we needed to step in that direction well, you get this information for free since you have this float i anyway so why not just use it in a nice way to fake some ambient occlusion so let's just save this I just disabled color inversion and specular inversion and take a look at this. Now we have darkness on the outside. It's fascinating by itself, isn't it? And if we go here, you clearly see that bright spot. That's the specular lighting I was talking about. This bright spot that makes it look a bit shiny, like from this angle, for example, on the bottom right, makes it look a bit shiny like if it were kind of a bit of metal, like anodized aluminium. But it really isn't. It's just specular lighting. And in this case, it's, it's really used as such and not to fake light. So if you now look inside of these little things, you actually see darkness. So it actually should get dark in here since, I mean, we are a point source light. And I use this effect here I can show you the fake occlusion, like look at this wall, it's, it's kind of bright, but if we get at a very parallel angle, this fake occlusion will make it dark. 
So if we look down these holes, this fake occlusion will fill them dark. And if we invert the image, they're going to be filled bright. Which makes the illusion of the light rays being reflected through the material. Quite neat, isn't it? So I think this fractal here looks even better than the previous one. I just fall in love with it. It's so dark. And we also have the dark fog. It's covering everything. So let's speed a bit up. Get to the top. And look at the dark and gloomy fractal city. The amount of detail is, as always, just fascinating. Um, we can always increase that. But as I already said, my graphics card is limited. So I'm putting this up, and you can play with it as you like, and maybe change a little bit, enjoy it. And that's basically it. So, I need to find a nice position for the thumbnail. This is looking awesome. So let's get out of here. So no compilation errors. Can I actually type something in this console? No. Unfortunately. So much to the shader. So the uh, calculate normal function is just uh, copied somewhere from the internet. The intersect function is basic ray marching stuff. You find this everywhere. The distance estimator is um, basically what makes the fractal here. I also found it on the internet by a bit of googling and adopted it to my needs. And this is just some scaling of the whole fractal. I definitely plan to make more interesting fractals in the future. However, my graphic card is limited. So I try to get the best out of it. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like ray launching at all. And See you next